Hallo, Narnag Heer, en welkom terug to Path of Exile, the closed beta for the Awakening. Two weeks ago, after episode 12, the server got wiped. So I just reached Act 3, or I basically reached about this point. I, I just finished the Ebony Barracks and I was on my way to the Lunaris Temple. And then there was a server wipe, there was a big patch and there was a server wipe. And my character was gone, and it didn't feel like starting all over again on stream so I just played on and off off stream while also participating in the uh, in the flashback leagues so that that's why it took me a bit longer than usual uh, to get back here but I'm back so I'm just gonna continue the series as if the the, the wipe never happened but before that I'm gonna jump into a couple of uh, changes that happened with that patch one of them is that there's a new ne networking mode the, the old one, basically there was no choice because there was only one networking mode and that was called uh, predictive mode where basically anytime you do something your game client is going to predict the results of that and it will show you the results of that prediction and then if the server disagrees with that you will teleport around or rubber band or, or glitch a bit basically to reset your client's game state back to the server's state and that it it works when there's no lag, <laughs> but some skills are very known are known to be very very uh, glitchy and, and problematic with that. But if you have a stable connection, then it's worth to check out the new connection mode that's now available. And it's called lockstep mode, and it can only be changed when you're outside of the game in the main menu. But I've, I'm already using it, and it's basically if you got a, a stable network connection, uh, this is the way to go. And more importantly, if you have a low amount of latency. So for me, you see, it's 15, 16, 17. It, it's rock solid. I'm, I'm connected to the, the Amsterdam server, which is really close to here. So for me, this, this just works perfectly. If you're near one of the servers and you get a really good stable latency, this, this, this is worth checking out. And basically what happens is that rather than your client doing all kinds of local predictions and assuming about what the game is going to do it's gonna wait until the, it, uh, the server is done telling the client what happened and it will not think of its own it will just follow what the client is uh, what the server is saying and that way you never experience glitches or teleporting or or just all kinds of weirdness because your game client is never actually assuming anything so that works as long as your, your connection is stable. So that's one of the of the changes. And also with the you can get a, a small latency thing up here now if you just keep pressing F1 uh, rather than it just only showing the, the three graphs or nothing. Another change is the vendors like Clarissa and the other vendors that sell rings and wands and stuff. They now have a second tab. And if you click it, you see skill gems. We finally are able to buy skill gems in game. And what's even better, they are affordable and they have experience on them. So currently this one is a level 4 that I'm looking at that uh, is already uh, 122,000 XP on the way to level 5. And this XP is basically 8% of your current XP, of your current player XP. That's applied to the gems to level it up. And I'm not quite sure why they picked 12, uh, 8%. It, it's, it's a nice magic number. But it works. Uh, so you can just get started with gems and just don't have to level them all the way from, from level 1. And there's different element, uh, different gems available from the, the different vendors. And as you level up and change acts you gain access to new sets of gems and I've, from the look of it it now seems based on, on character class as well because I'm playing a ranger at the moment and it's predominantly green gems with some of the other gems Watch yourself. basically it seems seems tied to the to the quest rewards whenever something is available from quest rewards I think then you get access to it as well so there's some, some, some nice quality of life uh, improvements, but without further ado, I'm going to jump in and we're going to hunt for piety. So that's what, what started last game, 
and that's what I'm gonna continue doing in right now. So obviously because this is Jena number two, a rebuild of Jena and not an exact copy of Jena, my skills are going to be slightly different. And my gear is going to be different, of course. Well, I'm still playing a bow ranger. That's the important bit. So, this time I... made a more conscious focus to pick up some physical skills. So I'm using tornado shot as my uh, primary area of attack skill. And I have a puncture as my primary single target skill. Uh, I also have poison arrow and I got a really really neat one which is a, a very much overcharged Val burning arrow with multi shot and it explodes hard my place is at God's side where will your journey end exile and I've tweaked my highlight uh, filter a bit as well to show slightly less items and to pick out highlight it, uh, to highlight out items that are uh, useful to sell all the rings for example small items and also smaller blue items I so love that Val burning arrow Nice thing about the, the gem vendors, uh, on a, uh, to come back to a slightly earlier topic, is that with the, the quest rewards you can now pick one gem that you really want for free. But if you're really torn between choosing gem 1 or gem 2, you can now buy gem 2. and um, So you can just choose gem 1 from, a, uh, from, the, vendor, from the, the quest reward. And then take the other gem and buy it from the from the vendor. And and so far, it's, this is the Lunaris temple. Yes. And so far, the 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 prices for the gems have been been really affordable. I mean, they start at a, a single scroll, and then it's you know some some Tom Smooth or Alk uh, orbs. So nothing really prohibitive. If you compare it to the the gems you can buy from the masters. The masters are more expensive. You get a way better deal from uh, from Clarissa and Gina and from Nissa. Nessa. Well, at least uh, the lady in Act One that sells you flasks and now also gems. It's kind of nice that there's a door here when there's just open arches to the side. Orb of scouring. I don't see those very often. So the puncture build I have linked to a knockback support gem and to a chance to flee a support gem. So the idea with, with puncture is that and the monsters start bleeding and they for 10% of the of, of the initial hit per second for about what is it five seconds five seconds yeah but if you make them walk then rather than taking 10% of the damage they take 60% of the damage which is a nice increase so if you then add something like uh, a chance to flee, no, then they will just run away. And even though oh, that one did a weird glitchy thing, or did it get yanked back? Um, that was also weird looking. Ah, there's a, a boss there. Well, 
wonder if this is a, a flash offering or some such. It's a skill I haven't seen. So it might be relatively new. Okay, let's first get rid of that guy, then there's no more extra. And that's being summoned. I'm kind of curious what uh, these weird lines are that appear when I shoot the tornado arrow. Because it's the only skill that does it. So I'm assuming it's part of the of the skill's effect, but it looks a bit weird. Ah, there's another one of these reanimators. Re one of the nice side effects of going for the bleeding and the poison damage is that you can totally ignore energy shields on the, the energy shield heavy monsters. And yeah, I'm just going through kind of random. Oh, cool. Uh, yo, no, 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 no. We're not going to go toe to toe, Mr. Cole. Also picked up what is called blink arrow. I uh, am liking blink arrow. Oh, he's bleeding. I like. And he is no more. A colossal mana flask. That's still smaller than what I got. So I don't care. Ooh, strong box. I think strong boxes have been responsible. Well, they've been very much part of the cause of the death of, of I think, all the characters I started uh, since I started playing again uh, a couple months ago. But still, I, I can't resist opening them every time I encounter one. So, let's see, what does this one do? Three packs of monsters, it costs Ice Nova, identified items, two additional rare items, that's a win. Guarded by a stream of monsters, and casts a random curse when activated. Okay, so, clickety, port out, and then explode the world. With the foul arrow. It's just so fun. That's no, 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 extra blink. That's just a quality item. A hatred gem. So that's what I'm using as uh, my as my aura hatred. I mean, the, 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 I I do pure physical damage. So all, everything I do is is focused on, on boosting the physical so something like this that just adds extra damage on top scaled off of the physical is just way too nice to have way too nice to not have let's see one two three cool. so we got one from the box and two from the bonus and this one is strength box okay That's fine. I think I got access to a strength node. One of the big ones that gives me 30 points. And we've reached a dead end. Oh, 
alchemy. I like orbs of alchemy. It's actually one of the, the things I'm currently trying to get more of. And it seems like besides just outright finding them, the only way to get them is to identify yellows. And then be lucky enough that there's certain mods on there like uh, plus skill, gem, uh, skill levels for gems that are socketed and chaos resistance. So it's been been rather slow going to gather alchemy orbs via selling items to the vendors. But I'm running around with gear that that's at least one tier old now. Oh, I actually had a waypoint here that I missed. I could have gotten that beforehand, but whatever. It's next to the to the waypoint down, so that's nice. So I think today's episode is going to be about a, an hour long. Piety, piety, you've got so much to answer for. About as lucky with this level as I was last time. This this could be a huge, huge level. So I'm playing with the range cards now instead of with a, a melee build. Just don't go surround me. Blood elementals. This is such a charming, cheerful, happy place. Really puts Diablo 3's Whimsydale to shame. And of course that was sarcasm. This is a really awful place. But I really like how they, they got the atmosphere just right. The, the background audio, the, the sound of people being tortured, the, the, the blood everywhere. It really just, just creates a a proper atmosphere. Uh, if you want to make a, a horrible place, this you could do worse than create this place. In a game, of course. Because you, it would just be sick to do something like this in real life. That, that's. I hope that that's obvious to everyone. Hello there, Mr. Blood Elemental. Tentacle ladies. Do you happen to know the way to piety? I guess you not. A moment of your hey, time. Hey, Vorici. Another slaughter the malcontents. Keep the targets alive. Okay, so that that's puncture puncture everywhere. <coughs> The Vrici missions are interesting. Hey, is that a exile? Cool, that's an exile. Nice. So I changed the, the outline on the chromatic trilinks to just be a, a, a green outline rather than a garish green background. Because it, 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 it took a bit too much visual attention, so every time I saw it I was pretty excited to, because it, it, it looked like I had found something useful. But I think I'm, I'm hovering about... 30 of the chromatic orbs. So finding yet another thing that turns into a chromatic is not as exciting anymore as it was in the beginning before I started paying attention to it. <coughs> so I toned down the effect a little bit. Uh, slightly. 
aggro out here. Luckily, I have big explosive arrows. Oh. That was my wall attack. Was actually not meaning to use it. Usually, just use it to soften up bosses. But it charges fast enough. I only need 12 kills to get it charged, and it holds three of them. I experimented a little bit with, with mods on it and the multi shot is just really really nice it's already a explosive arrow by itself but if you then shoot three arrows you tend to mow down groups of enemies really really nicely Find the yes, oh wow, nice. Found the cages already. This part of the run is going faster than when I did it a couple weeks ago on my uh, Templar, my damage reflection Templar. But of course, being able to deal damage at a distance rather than mostly re uh, reflecting the damage that gets dealt to you, it's it's uh. It helps with clear speed. It, it, this build is a lot less on survival, but clear speed for things like this, it's a hell of a lot better. time there's a patch for the game now I tense up a little bit oh no please let there not be another wipe I've been lucky so far that today the, the the game started patching again and I know it looked like it was, was going to download about 500 megabytes or something it's um, so it's like oh no that, that looks big so I immediately open my browser check the forums but there was a patch and there was some downtime, but there was no wipe, so... Phew! Survived that one. <coughs> so I've got a couple of stun gems equipped in some of the red sockets of my... Uh, of my links. Which seems... As good as any. I'm doing decent amounts of, of direct damage on top of uh, damage over time. So I figured if I was able to just stun enemies for a little bit, then they'll just bleed to death while they do that and they are less busy attacking me. And since this is. Well, it's, it's compared to playing a. Thank you Templar, it's really a fragile character. So, using all the tricks I can. I mean, I even have the frost arrow with me to just freeze enemies and I also got the hatred running. So, all the attacks I do, it, it still chills enemies. Sometimes even freezes them if I'm lucky. This another event. Yep. Then we go this way. Yep. That way. Oh, look! Fish in a barrel. I heard you can shoot them. Hey, and that's the assassin target behind the door. Okay. So, no AWEs, just uh, punctures. That one is dead. That one is dead. That one is dead. That's... 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 Come 
couple more targets. Hello. Yes. There is an exile. No, don't die, don't die. Awesome! And the uh, exile just died spontaneously. Hmm. Right, I'm uh, gonna make a, a quick town stop and run up and down to Ferici, so I'll be right back to continue with the interesting part. Hello again. So, inventory is empty, Ferici is happy I took out the target. Or rather, that I took out the bodyguards. But now, onwards to piety. Who is supposed to be somewhere around here? Upside, not actually you. running elemental attacks as a primary thing, so I don't really care that much about the elemental resistances they got. Oh, and the death bow. Not an upgrade, but then again I got a really nice master mod on it. Oh, it just might have potential, I'll just... Okay, now time for piety. This is going to be interesting. Uh, yeah. Has no one managed to kill you yet, Exile? Then it seems you've earned my personal attention. Lightning Avatar. Okay, she's just shooting like this. Honestly, I don't really mind. The relief form was the most scary for me. Your death doesn't fix anything, Piety, but at least it won't get any worse. Well, that was the goal for this episode. I defeated Piety. So next one is the Scepter of God and the track towards Dominus. You have claimed the loss. That's uh, I got better damage on my other one. No, okay, I'm, I'm torn. Let's just uh, keep it. Talk to Mr. Watch yourself. Griger. We get a. Ooh, two passive skill points. Tread nice. carefully. Oh, can also. So, this is what I've been doing with the, with the skill tree. I don't think it's, it's been changed since the last beta. So, I managed to get the. The acrobatics and the face acrobatics, that was basically my first beeline. Then I went up to get the intelligence node here. Then I went down and I unlocked access to these nodes if I need them. Then I'm gonna... Oh, I got refund points, not actual skill points. So next up I'm gonna grab this one, Weathered Hunter. The, the accuracy is nice, dex is nice. But especially the 8% uh, resist all elements. That should nicely round out my resistances then only fire is the the low ball there but I'll fix that at some point and then I think I was going down here somewhere 
not here because this is access, but this one because it does extra physical damage over time, which is uh, bleeding and the bloodletting extra damage against bleeding enemies. This should be very very nice for the puncture part of the build. And yeah, I think that was about as far as I went down here. We got those. We got these uh, skill notes, which are obviously useful. More evasion rating, melee damage. No. And for the rest, I think I was going for this circle here with all the the bow nodes. There's some of the the dual sockets. I've actually and there's one down here as well with some evasion around it. So this is potentially useful. Might drop down here for another jewel. It's a jewel there, and I think this is all extra physical damage. Just it doesn't matter if it's uh, melee arranged. So that's really nice. There's chaos here, which is obviously useful with the uh, poison arrow. And by that point, uh, I'm probably beyond Act 4 already, so that's as far as I want to plan. And, and I've also found some of the, the jewels, I think those are a new thing in the expansion. So this is one of the first I found. It's uh, a unique jewel. The dexterity from passives in the radius is transformed to intelligence. If I pick it up and open up the passives and just hoover, the radius is freaking huge. So this is good to convert a lot of nodes. And yeah, let's just stick it there. So this is very useful. And then there's other things like 2% additional chance to block spells with shields. And totems gain plus X to all elemental resistances. And this one is for extra attack speed uh, with bows and stun duration. And this is one for extra physical damage with swords. And the nice thing is, you can take the, the, the regular items you use to reforge items. And you can say, okay, let's just reroll this one. And because it's just a blue item, you can reroll it. And this one as well. I started out with only the, the, the attack speed uh, for bows mod. And I just added an extra one to it and I got the stun duration. So that's really nice things that uh, nice nice possibilities that that are opened up by having the jewels. Though you still ah, I actually forgot to read the book. Stupid. So extra resistances. Yep, and I think I had a skill that was now blocked on strength. Yeah, a stun. So might as well grab that one. Then I can level up my stun. So. And then that this is it for uh, this episode. So I'm uh, I'm happy to be <coughs> to be back playing Jena, even though this is Jena the second due to a uh, a server wipe that was outside of my control. Upside is we're back on hardcore now. So there's always a silver lining if you look for it. Um, as usual. Thumbs up if you like it, subscribe if you want to uh, stay up to date. And with that, I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.